Hey everybody, thanks for being here. Today we are going to quickly do a review of this bad boy, the Heart Shadow Exotic Sword. This weapon review is 100% on time and definitely not late. It's, it's not guys, shut up. I think overall Heart Shadow is pretty neat. It's got some fun things going on under the hood and there is one particularly weird thing going on that apparently not a lot of people know about, meaning I DM'd a few friends and they had no idea. So why not share today? Let's go ahead and do a breakdown on how good the sword is overall and then I will give you my final thoughts. But real quick, guys, I got to tell you about Catalyst Black, a brand new action packed team based shooter from Super Evil Megacorp that just launched for all mobile devices. I'm telling you, you got to go check it out. A top tier battleground shooter game entirely on mobile. This ain't no one trick pony. There are multiple game modes for y'all to enjoy. Do you want a TLDR? Of course you do. You got Hydra mode where players can battle other players and a big bad boss. You got Slayer mode where you got to defeat enemies and earn points to win. You also got Eventide mode where you battle over control of an ancient fortress. With tons of customizable gear and guns, this game's got it all. Question, do you like games with sick art? Well, look no further, Chief. Catalyst Black is jam-packed with epic battlegrounds, badass characters, and sick weaponry. You can even put on ancient masks and channel the power of gods from another realm. It's freaking crazy, but in a good way. Did I mention this game is free to play? Yeah, you heard me right. So what are you waiting for? Click the link down in the pinned comment and download Catalyst Black. Don't miss out on the best battleground shooter of 2022 on mobile. And thank you again to Catalyst Black for sponsoring today's video. All right, back to the content. The Heart Shadow Exotic Sword is a void power weapon. And if I had to wager a guess, was probably built and intended to be used in PVE. As for PVP, well, we'll get to that later. For now, here's what the exotic perks do. You know the drill. Exhumation. Heavy attacks made with full sword energy turn you invisible and fire exploding void projectiles. On top of that, we have shot in the dark. Remaining invisible grants your weapon increased damage for a brief duration. Hitting a target with his weapon's projectiles while shot in the dark is active will weaken them. Kind of a lot of info between two perks, but the short version is 1. Heavy attack. You both yeet out four void projectiles and go camo. 2. If your void projectiles from your heavy attack have hit a target, that target will now be weakened, aka they are now debuffed and will take additional incoming damage. 3. Provided you're still camo, which you should be, you'll also get increased weapon damage. Want numbers? Sure you do. Naturally, I went to go hang out with Carl the Cabal to get them details. A regular light swing on Carl is 19,171 damage. When camo, we get that outgoing damage buff, right? Well, a light swing while invis is 23,963 damage, meaning we're looking at a 25% damage buff when in Viz. After hitting Carl with Void Projectiles, which remember also applies a debuff, a Light Swing is now 27,558 damage, meaning the weakened debuff is 15%. Worth noting, by the way, that weakness debuff, it applies to all incoming damage, not just for you, but for your whole team. So if you whacked any enemy with those big void projectiles and then hit them with, say, a super, that enemy would take an extra 15% damage from that super, or whatever else you want to hit them with. In terms of debuff strength, 15% ain't amazing, but it ain't half bad. Keep in mind that both Tractor Cannon and Divinity deliver a 30% debuff, which is damn good. So why use the Heart Shadow? Think of it this way, because you can kind of bring both a buff and a debuff to the table at the same time, which is usually rare. It's like that where they put peanut butter and jelly in the same jar. Two for the price of one. When dealing damage with the Heart Shadow, you can really do it one of two ways. Method number one, only heavy attack. Open up with your heavy attack to both go camo and debuff the enemy with void balls. Wait until your sword energy fully recharges, then fire off another heavy attack. Rinse and repeat. Method number two, heavy and light attack combo. Open up with a heavy attack to both go camo and debuff the enemy with void bulls. While waiting for your sword energy to recharge, whack away at an enemy with light attacks. When your energy is full, hit another heavy attack to both go camo and debuff, rinse and repeat. Overall, the Heart Shadow ain't bad. I don't have one yet. All my testing was done on my buddy Jason's account. Shout out to him. He's actually been using it with his boys to farm the boss encounter of the Duality Dungeon, which is a primo farm, by the way, because you can get not only dungeon weapons, but artifice armor. Granted, there are plenty of loadouts you could use to farm the boss, but still. If you have the Heart Shadow and want to take full advantage of it for damage dealing in PvE, remember 100% to equip the 
the Lucent Blade Armor mod. Not only that, but make sure you got another arc mod on somewhere to activate the Lucent Blade secondary perk. Just having the regular mod on will give you a 5% window of extra damage with swords, and that's an extra 35% damage dealt if you were wondering. The secondary perk greatly improves your sword recharge rate, which is kind of huge for Heart Shadow. I guess Striking Light is also maybe an option, but it doesn't really hold a candle to Lucent Blade. I don't know about you, but I would much rather dish out an extra 35% damage than waste a charged with light stack to generate an orb. The DR when sprinting is kind of cash money though, but I use that more for trying to solo hard endgame PvE content, that's about it. Fun facts about the Heart Shadow. Going invisible for any reason at all will trigger the exotic perk Shot in the Dark. It doesn't have to be a heavy attack from the sword. Meaning if you're, say, a hunter and you decide to dodge and go invisible, bam, you've now activated Shot in the Dark. The Echo of Persistence Void 3.0 fragment also pairs together with Heart Shadow. Normally your camo duration with the sword is a flat 7 seconds, but with Echo you can take that up to 9 seconds. Likewise, the Graviton Forfeit Hunter Helm can also take the sword camo duration to 9 seconds, and the Graviton Forfeit and Echo of Persistence together will take you all the way up to 11 seconds of camo. While yeah, technically any class in D2 can now go invis thanks to Void 3.0, Really, it seems that hunters can take the most advantage of using the Heart Shadow. After all, Titans and Warlocks need to take advantage of Echo of Obscurity to go invis, and hunters do not. Now, there's one extra thing about Heart Shadow we haven't talked about yet, the exotic Catalyst Wraith Walk. Faster movement speed while invisible. Might not sound like much on paper, but believe me, the extra movement is really noticeable in-game. While doing a little testing in a private lobby on how quickly you can move, I learned something really dumb that I don't think Bungie intended to code into the weapon. The extra speed buff from Wraith Walk will kick in regardless of if you have ammo in your sword or not, and icing on the cake, it works in PvP. See? Told you it was dumb. Again, seeing a side by side, you really book it with the sword out while camo, and again, no ammo at all required. Just whip out your invisible stick of death, go camo as a hunter, and go full on roadrunner. Because I tested that on a friend's account, I was only able to try it out a little bit in PvP, but I gotta tell you, shockingly entertaining. You're able to move around the map really quickly, and when I inevitably get this bad boy to drop for myself, I want to come up with some meme builds to really take advantage of that extra speed. I'd actually be really worried if you could still whip out swords and trials, but thankfully Bungie 86 that a while ago. However, I should mention that Iron Banner Rift is currently a thing, at least for another day anyway, and you can 100% both pick up the spark and run much faster with Heart Shadow's Wraithwalk Catalyst at the same time. The camo part might not do you much good, especially if they see you, but the extra movement speed can definitely help you get in quicker for a double. Just something to think about. Current thoughts on the Heart Shadow. Fun weapon, straightforward viable in PvE for damage dealing and debuffing, and more of a meme in PvP, but a meme I want to use more often. I'm actually kind of bummed that there are no artifact mods this season that allow any extra fun shenanigans with a sword. If, in the future, we get any mods that pair well with swords at all on the artifact, you can bet your ass that I will immediately be whipping out the Heart Shadow. Be sure to watch my video on how to unlock that exotic catalyst, by the way. I will link that down in the video description. Subscribe to my channel if you're new, and I appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.